I have actually checked on the website. Uh, the Amazon India has this book. Uh, this is the ad for that. Um, if you are not purchased so far, I couldn't. This is what recent I saw yesterday. Uh, it is 718 rupees or whatever possible. And this is second edition, 1st January 2009. Okay. This is available at website www.amazon.in silicon wireless or technology. This is written here. You can take, uh, uh, they say, 5 days, uh, 5 to 8 business days. So, in case you are not purchased or do not want to purchase the yours, but in case you want to, this you can note down or maybe you can go on Google and say Amazon India. So, whichever way it is. So, do not tell me that book is not available or something, something, okay. Is that okay? Coming back to in those who want to write that website, maybe you can in case you feel that that is what I am not. Uh, we were other day looking for Bruce Deal model, uh, Bruce Deal and Andy Grove model for oxidation. Uh, the first paper published in this area in way back in 65 and this model is very popular in the literature called Deal Grow model. Uh, and I just told you other day, Grow was the one of the CEO or chief of Intel from say 1992 to 97 is now emeritus scientist or emeritus CEO of uh, Intel. Andy Grove also has a book on physics and technology of semiconductors or rather technology of semiconductor which is a old book but many things remain same irrespective whether today or yesterday. So, one can also look for Grove's book in the library. There is another book on VLSI technology by Wolf, W-L-F, Wolf which is also very good. Okay. Uh, which is rather recent compared to Plummer of course still older but around 2006 Wolf has also published. So, any of these books are good enough please do not say that the books are not there because of that whatever happened okay at least do not blame books okay. Okay so the assumption what he did was that initially there is a finite thin oxide and at t is equal to 0 minus uh, this is the oxide available and T is equal to 0 plus oxygen atta attacks this silicon layer, silicon dioxide layer and starts the oxidation. Uh, we did last time, I am just trying to recapitulate. Then the oxygen species then reacts with, uh, diffuses through the thin oxide, reaches to the silicon, silicon dioxide interface, reacts with silicon and forms SiO2. And we are already last time said there are three fluxes F1 in the gas phase, F2 in the oxide and F3 near the interface of silicon, silicon dioxide. And we also discussed the other day that in steady state uh, if the oxide, oxidant is coming, diffusing, reacting, the system has to be in steady state and in steady state all fluxes must be equal. Okay. This we have done last time, I am just trying to push it again and we say F1 is equal to F2 equal to F3 and that we call it F, F okay and we will show you this process again but this is just to show you how, how oxidation proceeds. Inside a furnace where temperature is kept 800 to 1200, wafers are vertically start on a quartz rack, oxygen is entering here and oxidizes this silicon. So let us start with the model. This is what we did last time. So now we actually look for the model. Okay. Here is the model. Same thing what I wrote, but there are now few more definitions. Let us say Cg is the oxidant gas or oxidant concentration in the gas stream that is not near the surface but inside the whole tube actually. This is called Cg. Then corresponding to this Cg, uh, we have a oxidant concentration at oxide interface is Cs okay, or rather C0 or oh sorry C0 uh, forget it Cs we have uh, Cs is the concentration here. So there is a gradient because there is no enough oxygen here or oxidant here. So there is a gradient from Cg to Cs. Now these are called gas phase concentrations. So equilibrium concentration in at the solid 
also can be found and we define C star as the equilibrium oxygen concentration in solid related to this Cg. Cg is the gas phase concentration and C star is the equivalent of that in the solid phase. Whereas C0 is similarly is equivalent concent oxidant concentration in solid related to Cs. So this relates to here and this relates to here. Okay. This is uh, then we say initial oxide thickness is Ci. Uh, initial concentration at the interface is Ci. Okay. And we we say already XO oxide thickness exists or Xi rather, but XO is the oxide thickness which we want to find at a given time and temperature. So let us look at the fluxes now. According to Dilgrove model, flux F1 which is in the gas phase uh, from the ambient to the surface, we know the flux will be proportional to the gradient. If Cg is the gas concentration in the bulk, Cs is the gas concentration near the surface, then F1 must be proportional to Cg minus Cs, whatever at the surface and whatever available in the stream, the gradient is set and that difference between the two is the flux F1 and the proportionality constant is called mass transfer coefficient Hg, mass transfer coefficient Hg. So F1 is Hg times Cg minus Cs, this is the first flux which we are looking into that is the gas phase flux. However, uh, we are more interested to know there are terms which probably you should learn from thermodynamics, but there are words called pressure, total pressure and there are words called partial pressures. Partial pressure is defined as the pressure of a gas inside a stream in a given temperature in a given area. Okay. So if I, if I know F1 is Hg this, I want to replace this Cg and Cs which are not known to me. Cg and Cs cannot be monitored. So I will try to know is there equivalence of these in terms of partial pressures and if I know the partial pressures, then I will also know correspondingly to that partial pressure using Hertz equation, we will find out what is the solid phase concentration for this partial pressures. So at the end, I am interested to correlate Cg, Cs with C star and C0, this is what I am looking for. So the first thing I do is after I write Hg into Cg minus Cs as the first flux and where I repeat Hg is called mass transfer coefficients. Okay. We define Cg uh, by ideal gas law, PV is equal to RT, there is nothing great about, this is concentration, so PV is equal to RT. So Cg is equal to Pg by Kt, n is the number 1 molecular this, so we Rkt is uh, Nkt can be written as n is equal to 1, therefore Rt is Kt. So C, sorry, Cg is Pg by Kt, Cs is Ps by Kt where Pg, Ps are the partial pressures of the oxidant at gas ambient and oxide surface. Okay. Again same Pg in the gas stream and Ps is the at near the interface of oxide and gas stream. Okay. So if I substitute Cg and Cs in the last equation by Pg and Ps term, then I get F1 is equal to Hg Pg by Kt minus Ps by Kt or is equal to Hg by Kt into Pg minus Ps. Okay. Please remember if I fix temperature and if I fix the gas flows, total gas flows, Hg is a constant which is the mass transfer coefficient proportional to the total pressures. Okay. We will see then in case of CVD. We invoke Henry's law for gases and fluids. There is a Henry law which actually relates the partial pressure to solid state concentration. This is called Henry's law. According to Henry's law, the C star which is the equilibrium oxide concentration in solid state is proportional to the partial pressure in gas stream. Similarly C0 which is at the surface of SiO2, C0 is proportional to partial pressure at the surface which is Ps and there is a constant associated with this equilibrium uh, equivalent this which is called Henry's constant. So C star is H time Pg, C0 is H time Ps where H is called 
Henry's constant. Okay. So now you can see I have relationship with C star and C0 in terms of PG and PS through Henry's constant. So I can use these two equations to go back into 3 and find the flux F1. What is the method? First I converted CG and CS into equivalent partial pressures by mass transfer coefficients. The partial pressures are related to their equivalent solid state concentrations by using Henry's law or Henry H is the Henry's constant. So now I have C star and C0 which are at the surface. Please remember C star and C0 are at the surface of SiO2 which are in solid phase that is the oxidant we are going to actually diffuse through. Okay. So F1 therefore is that okay? I repeat first we relate Cg to Ps, Pg, Cs, Cg, US, Ph, Pg, USA and then we wrote uh, this equation. Then we say okay using invoking the Henry's law for fluids C star is proportional to Pg, C0 is proportional to Ps then C star is H time H is capital H P G and C0 is H time P S and now I substitute P G P S from here in this equation 3. So if I do that F1 is H G by K T C star by H minus C0 by H or F1 is H G by capital H K T C star minus C0 and uh, I can redefine this Hg upon Hkt which is all constant at a temperature and mass total flow and pressure then H is Hg upon Hkt is redefined as term H which of course is proportional to mass flow. Okay. So F1 is H time C star minus C0. So first flux in the gas phase is related to solid phase concentration difference H times C star minus C0. So this is the first flux we obtain. Uh, now as I say what is our game is to find F2, find F3 and then what do we do? We write F1 is equal to F2 equal to F3 and then solve. Ultimately what I am really trying to do is I want to find dx0 by dt. What is dx0 by dt? rate of oxide growth that is what I am interested in rate of oxide growth. So if I know the time I know how much is oxide I will be growing in case of oxidation. So that is my purpose. So first flux F1 I got now secondly if we look at our figure again just a minute. If you look at this figure F1 we have found in terms of C star C0 F2 is the flux which is diffusing inside thin oxide. F2 is the flux of oxidant passing through the oxide thickness and that is equal to C0 minus Ci. Okay. Ci is as I say is concentration of oxidant at silicon silicon dioxide interface Ci. So there is a gradient diffusion. So F2 is then proportional to C0 minus Ci by X0. This is gradient. C0 minus Ci by X0 is essentially a gradient. And what is the gradient constant should be? Since it is diffusing, what should be the constant of proportionality here? Diffusion coefficients okay, of that oxidant in the oxide. Please remember diffusion coefficient is for the material oxide or whatever species going in that material diffusivity is different in different material for different uh, gas flows going in. So specifically you have to earlier we had talked about impurities in silicon. Now we are talking of equivalent solid uh, concentration of gases in the oxide and how do they diffuse through. Okay. So if I write that I write F2 is minus D effective minus is because I am subtracting Ci minus C0 by X0 uh, where D why I did this because final concentration minus the initial concentration divided by X is actually slope okay. It is essentially how we define that it is going down. So that is the final concentration minus the initial concentration divided by X0 is the gradient. So minus D effective Ci minus C0 by this where D effective diffusion coefficient of oxidant in oxide. Okay. 
this is flux F2. Now this is now made available to react with silicon oxidation oxidant is now diffusing please remember what is the process we are saying the gas from the gas phase oxygen is coming equivalently it gets to the silicon oxide surface then diffuses through and then reacts with silicon to form fresh oxide is that clear that is what deal grow model is suggesting gas phase through oxide and to react with silicon that is the process we are defined. So we want to know what is the flux 3 which is proposed and we know flux 3 is essentially as many silicon atoms are available or concentration of silicon available Ci at that place that is the only one which it can react with oxygen cannot react more than Ci because whatever available only can react. So we say the flux F3 is proportional to Ci and the proportionality constant is called reaction rate constant K, Ks reaction uh, Ks is called reaction rate constant. So F3 is Ksci. So now I have three fluxes. F1 is from gas phase to the so silicon dioxide surface. From silicon dioxide surface to silicon surface diffuse and then reacts with silicon to form fresh oxide. Okay. And as I say if I assume it is in steady state which will happen I put the vapor in a uh, constant temperature constant flow system will go into steady state. In that case the flux F is F1 equal to F2 equal to F3. Okay. No, 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 no. What we are saying available concentration in the solid phase from the bulk is C star of which only C0 is really going to diffuse because that is at the surface. CS is the available. CS is available which correspond to C0 in solid. Okay. Correspond, I just now said gas concentration equivalent in solid concentration is related, I just now said through the mass transfer coefficient. Okay. And through that to partial pressure, through that to Henry's constant to the actual uh, concentrations. So we are saying the gas is coming equivalently how much gas is available overall of which how much will diffuse from the surface is C0. It will go to Ci because there is a gradient there is very few oxidant here and very large oxidant here. So it will diffuse and when it reaches here it will start reacting with the silicon surface and form oxides. So we do little maths and there is nothing very serious maths. Since we have already done F1, F2, F3 are equal we say first we equate F1 equal to F2 and next time we will equate F2 equal to F3. So if I write F1 equal to F2 I get S C star minus C0 minus D effective C i minus C0 by X0 and if I write F2 equal to F3 I get minus D effective C i minus C0 by X0 is K S C i. So I have equation 9 and 10 which are uh, we I got it from equating F1 equal to F2 and F2 equal to F3. Uh, two equations, two unknowns. I am, I am interested to know C0. I am interested to know C, uh, Ci in terms of C star available gas phase concentration and uh, correspondingly I derive solve these two equations 9 and 10. How do I eliminate, take Ci out of this, substitute here and find C0 or get C0 from here, substitute here to get Ci. Okay. This math is little longer so I just wrote down the final equation. I repeat solve 9 and 10 to get Ci and C0. Substitute one of them to the other, you will get the other value or I'll substitute from the C0 into the other like or second equation, you will get Ci first, whichever way you do. Uh, so I get Ci is equal to C star upon 1 plus Ks by H plus Ks X0 by D effective. Then C0 is 1 plus Ks X0 by D effective times C star and the denominator is same. Please remember denominator is same 1 plus Ks X0 by this Ks by H. So I have now Ci and C0. Okay. I may not be very 
uh, I do not need to know C0 very much, but I am interested to know CIY because that is the concentration it is going to react with silicon. So, there I figured out both can be calculated, but I am more interested to know CI in terms of C star which I got. So, what deal go model says now, what is the oxidation rate? Can anyone suggest what is the oxidation rate? If F is the flux and N is the number which is available for reaction. So, F by N is essentially equal to dx0 by dt. If what is dx by dx, dx by dt? The available flux divided by available concentration of where it can react, the ratio of that is essentially dx0 by dt. So, that is Grodil's uh, model which says if N1 is the concentration of oxidant molecules, then dx0 by dt is F pi N1 and F is equal to F1 equal to F2 equal to F3. So, F3 is the smallest term KSCI. So, I use F3 instead of I can write any one of them, but then there will be two variables coming. So, I just want to remove, I have got CI value anyway. So, I got KSCI by N1. Please remember this N1 for oxygen is 2.2 to 10 to power 22, N1 for H2O, OH, HOH molecule is 4 point double of that, okay. OH, OH double the concentration, whereas pure oxygen has N1 as 2.22 in 10 to the power 22. This has been chemically monitored, measured by many experiments, by atomic spect mass spectroscopy to FTIR, everything may one is monitoring that. So, if I dx0 by Kcci by this, I substitute Ci from the last equation. I just derived the expression for Ci. So, substitute Ci here. So, it gets Ki upon C star upon N1, 1 upon 1 plus Ks by H, K sorry, Ks x0 by D effective. So, what, how does it look like? We will do some some simple looking expression for this, first you note down this, yes. So, I get dx0 by dt is ks star by n1, 1 upon 1 plus ks by h plus ks x0 by d effective. So, this equation now I know, I can modify this equation to suit some kind of good looking expressions, okay. What is good looking? Some a b constant, so it looks very simple equation, algebraic, of course not algebraic, first order differential equation. Is that noted? This one, dx0. So, I, I have now the oxidation rate and I will modify it slightly in form, that is what I am going to do. Is it okay? Okay. So, dx0 by dt is 2 c star d effective by n1. I actually multiplied 2 d effective, 2 d effective by ks, both sides, norm this and here, and I get this expression. Readjust the terms 2 d effective 1 plus ks by 1 by ks plus 1 upon h plus 2 x0 into this constant. And now I define some terms. I define term A as 2 d effective 1 upon k s plus 1 upon h as A. And I 2 d effective c star by n1 I define as B. Okay. Same expression, this I defined as B and this I defined as A. So, I get a very nice looking simple differential equation first order dx0 by dt is b upon a plus 2x0. Please remember Ks is a function of temperature, h is a function of mass transfer coefficients or mass flows. In normal case h is much higher than Ks, but let us see how much. dx0 by dt b upon a plus 2x0 is the simplest equation we get, okay, which good looking. Assuming that B and A are constants at a given temperature for a given mass flow, okay. If you change that, these 
terms will B and A values will also correspondingly change. Okay. Is it okay? So, it is a very trivial looking this, but it is important. Why are we doing this again? Because at the end when I monitor the oxide, uh, I have the furnace, I actually oxidize the wafers and then I may do some characterization to know the oxide thickness. But if a priori I am doing something process on a system where there is no furnace and there is nothing to this, I must be able to get relative oxide thicknesses every now and then or change in oxide thickness or whatever I am doing in process which is running on a CAD tool, okay. That is called TCAD for technology tools are available. Earlier ones we used to have a program from Stanford called Supreme Process Simulator. There are now many, one is Centura, other is Dios. There are many such program, DESIS which is device plus uh, process simulator. Since we have many process simulators now, we like to know what models they use because they will also find out what is the oxide capacitance every now and then. So, they need to know oxide, how much grown, okay. So, you may specify temperature, you may specify gas flows, you may specify but then at the end software has to do something to evaluate that. We need models to do that. So, all this effort is to see a model which is going into a TCAT tool, okay. So, whenever you are using central or others, you probably do not even look at the models. You just, it asks data, you just substitute and you guess, ah, oh, good. But actually what has gone through is this and maybe tomorrow for thin oxide better models will be required. So, you must know how do we actually derive models, okay. what is the physics behind, chemistry behind, material science behind and your brain behind. Okay. So, I re rewrite the same term A dx0 by dt. Okay. Okay. So, if I solve the, if I see this equation, this is a quadratic equation. Uh, so, we put an initial condition to solve the differential equation, sorry not, it is a simple differential equation. I say at t is equal to 0 according to Diel-Gros model, there is a initial oxide XO is Xi, that is how we started with, there is an initial oxide, okay. So, XO is Xi and corresponding to this time, Xi, if I use, uh, okay, so we substitute here and let us say tau is the time taken to create this Xi. Let us say tau is the time taken equivalently, actually it is existing, we do not know what time we did, we did not do anything. So, we say, okay, equivalently if, if we have to grow this much oxide, how much time? So, that time I declared as tau. So, I say now Ax, Ax, if I put it this, a 2x0 dx0 is Bt and I integrate this then I get Ax0 2x0 so I Bt plus initial condition I will put it at x is equal to xi tau is the time taken. So, I rewrite this term Ax0 by 2x square Bt plus B tau, tau is the time taken to grow oxide thickness of xi and there is, this is only a fictitious number, why fictitious? The initial oxide is already there, we are we are just trying to equate it into a time frame, okay. Or to say tau is xi square plus a xi upon b, a xi, xi square a xi by b is essentially this. Xi also I do not know in fact, okay. So, we assume normally tau should be very small because thin oxide is there. But if I somehow figure out how much was xi, then I should be able to know how much time equivalently it would have been. Okay, so this is my equation and this looks what? A simple quadratic equation and therefore, I can find x0 terms, okay. I repeat the term which I am getting is Ax0 plus 2x0 square, 2, 2 of course will cancel, x0 square is equal to Bt plus tau. So, this is the expression you will get, x0 square plus Ax0 is Bt plus tau. Uh, for a thicker oxide grows, tau can be neglected. Why? Because T will be much larger than tau. Tau is very small, but it is existing. But for a thinner oxide, that may be comparable. So, we must figure out how much is actually thin oxide during initial time must be actually evaluated, okay. I will show you how. So, if this quadratic equation can be have solution of minus A plus minus A square plus 4 B T plus tau by 2, 
minus a by 2 plus minus a by 2 1 plus t plus tau upon a square by 4 b and uh, of course negative solution is neglected why but there is nothing called negative oxide growths okay so we say it is only minus a by 2 plus a by 2 terms and assumption is and time should be such that this term should because this is 1 plus so obviously this term will be larger than a by 2 and therefore positive growths are expected is that clear i repeat if this term is even if it is point something okay point 1 plus something is there which means a by 2 times this will be always larger than a by 2 and therefore positive growths are expected so if i write only plus sign I get x 0 is and I put minus inside. So, a by 2 into 1 plus t by tau a square by p to the power half under root minus 1. Now, we define some uh, whatever we a and b we define, we actually give some nomenclature to them and why we will see soon. We call b as a parabolic rate constant, b is called parabolic rate constant and b by a is called linear rate constant this is definition name wise and why we name linear and parabolic will be soon seen when we will take the two cases okay i repeat b is defined as parabolic parabolic rate constant and b by a uh, in many models this this is given kp and this is given kl parabolic kp and kl so most of the earlier cat tools may be using or even centra uses capital kp means parabolic rate constant capital kl subscript l is essentially is linear rate constant okay which is same as what i have been using this is deal grow model i cannot change k is there because that is deals model if it is my model i can do any other names but this is deals model and that is how they are defined way back in 65 two limiting cases okay just look at this terms this term is smaller or larger depends on this t plus tau is larger than this t plus tau is smaller than this two extreme cases okay so first we say t plus tau is much smaller than a square by 4b so we can then expand it by binomial term so 1 plus x to the power half if x is less than 1 is 1 upon half x so this 1 plus half t plus tau by a square by b minus 1 1 1 cancels so x 0 is b by a t plus tau for a given temperature given gas flow b and a both are constant how is x0 related to time linear b is x0 is proportional to tau tau is yeah, t tau is very small so x0 is proportional to time what is this growth is linear it's linearly increasing okay so now you understood why i name b by a linear rate constant because x0 is b by a times t and therefore b by a is named as linear rate constant okay so initially what will happen that what does that mean if t is smaller what does that mean initially oxide will grow linearly with time and as time increases we believe it will become parabolic and let us see how that can happen is that clear so initial growth of silicon dioxide is linear with time and then starts it reduces the rate can you think why it will reduce the rate as the time increases oxide thickness will increase so the gradient will decrease is that clear to you so if the flux available is less whatever is available may react but available is less okay so the oxidation rate will go down okay so that is the essential as you grow thicker oxide it will be much smaller impurities I mean oxidant will reach there so smaller thickness relative to the time will grow up okay is that point clear why this is happening 
So, okay, uh, before we come to parabolic, there are few terms to be explained. Uh, B by I A is 2, now we substitute B and A, 2 defective C star by N1, 2 defective K S plus this can be rewritten as C S star upon C star upon N1 K S H by K S plus. In general, for a given mass flow in oxidation furnace and for the temperatures which we normally use from 800 to 1200, H is much larger than Ks. Ks is e to the power minus e by kt kind, minus 4, minus 5. Whereas B will be or H will, uh, sorry, H will be order of few centimeter per seconds, okay, which is much higher. So what happens in mo most normal cases? H is so which is it limited by H or Ks? Smaller the one limits it, larger one doesn't limit it. Okay, so H is not. I don't say every time in CVD we say no, it is mass limited. But in this particular case, we say H is much larger than Ks. So if I do this, I can neglect H. One upon H, it can goes. So we get uh, B by A C star by N one into Ks. Okay, is that okay? If H is larger than Ks, this can be neglected. Okay, one upon H is smaller compared to one upon Ks, and therefore we neglect H, and we get. C star upon N1 into Ks and as I say Ks, how do we define Ks? Reaction rate constant, what is reaction rate? Available oxidant reacting with silicon, the rate with which that reaction takes place, it is a chemical process which essentially means, which is essentially e to the power minus temperature dependent term. So B by is also linear rate constant which also follows Ks dependence of temperature. Is that clear? Bs, B, B by A is a function of Ks, Ks follows temperature dependence e to the power. So B by A will also follow temperature dependence same as Ks. Okay. So we write then this is the X0 C star by N1 Ks T plus tau. This is called, so initial oxide growth is related to uh, with time as linear growth and it is also limited by available reaction rate at CI. How much is available only can much, please remember availability of CI, I mean uh, is the silicon atoms which can it react. I may have enough oxidant but not all is possible to react. Okay. Initially enough oxidant has come but there are not enough bonds where oxygen can, SiO, SI bond can be formed. So the growth rate is limited by available bonds. Okay. So it is essentially decided by Ks which is temperature dependent. Okay. Typically we will show you the term but as just now want to clarify. Okay. Please remember oxidant is reaching enough amount, thickness is very small, much of it diffuses through whatever is available, most of it will reach CI. But available oxidation will be limited by the reaction there which is temperature dependent which is essentially giving how many atoms can react. Okay. This is the case 1, what is that case we are talk? Time is very low, smaller times T plus tau. Okay. However, if T is much larger than tau and T is much larger than A square by B, longer time oxidation is performed. T will be always larger than tau, tau is very small. So if T is much larger time, T plus tau is T and then we say T is larger than A square by 4B, then we can neglect 1 there and rewrite the term X0 as 2 root T B by A into A by 2 minus A by 2. If I readjust these terms, this is just substitute into the equation which we wrote earlier in quadratic solution substitute T much greater than this one can be neglected there. Therefore, under root of that is root T B and into A by 2 minus A by 2 and uh, if I do this, it essentially comes to be equal to root B T. Okay. We are neglecting small terms, so compared to this everything is small. This term is smaller than this, we already said through this. So we always say X0 is root of Bt, 
which means x0 square is bt. What is this law? Parabola. This x0 square is bt is a parabola. So, x0 growth is now under root of bt means it reduces the oxidation rate as or therefore oxide thickness as time is larger and larger initially. So, initially linear and then parabolic growth starts in the case of oxidation. So, this is the ma and since B is parabolic constant I mean is giving a constant of parabolicity. So, we call B as parabolic rate constant B is called parabolic rate constant. I told you know this A square by 4 B is much smaller compared to T. So, A is much smaller. Obviously, this term is a, is much larger than this. Okay. So, it that is neglected. In actual models, you do not neglect anything, but if you say 100 minus 0 0.05, think of it whether you want to retain 0 0.05. If you wish, fine. 99.95 is the answer or 100, your choice. What decimal accuracy you want? 64 precision, 128 bits of precision. Computer can do any precision. Okay. Uh, here is some experiment was performed. Okay. Uh, just to compare those values which I am talking about, I have done an oxidation experiment. Means actual experiment was performed. I have grown an oxide of silicon at 920 degrees centigrade, and assume that tau given to me is 50 seconds. Okay, 50 seconds. Now, we monitor x0 at different times. I keep growing 5 minute uh, say uh, time in hours. So, this is some 6 minutes and this is 18 minutes, this is 24 minutes, this is 30 minutes, this is 60, 40 minutes roughly 36 minutes. So, I have a different oxide thickness uh, oxide times oxidation times in this is in hours. Please remember this is in hours. And I have monitored by some way the oxide thickness. We will see how to monitor oxide thickness. And I monitored, measured them for 0.11 hour, it is 0 0.04.41 micron, 0 0.3.10, 0 0.4.128, 0 0.5.153, 0 0.6177. Okay. Since you did not want to leave A, I have used it to show I can take care. Okay. How, how do you get that value? Also, it is for useful. Since x0 square is bt plus tau minus ax0, so I get AX, x0 is bt plus tau by x0 minus a. Okay. What is this equation looks like? This is y is equal to mx plus c kind of equation, linear. So, at, if I plot t plus tau by x0, this term versus x0, so somewhere at 0 that is t plus tau at tau by x0 at this point whatever is the constant is minus a. So, you can monitor that minus a how much is minus a. So, in actual I just want to make parabolic I said neglect a, but in calculation I have I will take care because I need to know a okay I need to know a. So, by extrapolating this curve I will get minus a and the slope is b. So, I could get B and B A and therefore, B and B by A that is K L and K P are monitored if I know actual oxide thicknesses at different growth temperatures, okay, uh, growth, different growth times. Okay. Assumption everywhere is temperature is constant and also the mass flows are constant. So, if you can see there that if I do experiment, I will be able to measure B and B by A. Okay. And then what do I have to do? This I have to repeat for many temperatures okay, to get B and B by A dependence with temperature. And then I figured out later maybe I do not know whether I have graph, I have, okay, I will show you. It shows that it is actually following the physics that is case and diffusivity is essentially whatever their temperature dependence is same happens to P and B by A as well. Okay, we will see this little later. So, is that okay? 
So, I can monitor B and B by A by actually monitoring the oxide thicknesses at different times of oxidations. Okay, is that plain clear? So, let us say by typical experiment which I did or rather someone else had done, of course I have calculated but this data was taken from our lab okay, many years ago. So, B is 0.2 micron square per hour, A is 0.5 micron and B by A therefore is 0.4 microns per hour, 0.4 micron per hour. So, I, I just now said if I know the data, I will be able to plot time versus x0 by this and if I know this, I will be able to evaluate B as well as B by A. Now, I, as I said you, I will repeat this experiment. What do I do? At different temperatures. Again, oxide thicknesses for only thing is now I may do it for a given time, okay. I mean same time so that, but even if you do different time, graph will slow the slope. So, it does not really matter as long as you, but preferably you do same so that you know where the slopes are moving, okay, just to see them. Why you want to do this? Because I want to know whether B and B by A really follows D and K S. That is what we have been from the experiment, uh, from the theory we are looking that B by is following K S and B is followed D effective. So, can, does that temperature dependence appears? So, we like to see that. So, we uh, actually do repeated experiment at 1000, 1100 and 1200 monitor oxide thicknesses at same times and replot B and uh, replot x0 versus time and get B and A for all of them, okay, for different temperatures. This is for 920, repeat it for 1000, repeat it for 1100, repeat it for 1200. If I do this, the data I get is 920 is this and 1200 is this, this is B by A. Please remember units, B is expressed as micron square per hour and B by is expressed as micron per hour, linear and parabolic word square, okay. Okay, so if I plot now B versus 1 upon T, okay, for dry oxidation, of course I, I have not talked about this, but will come dry means only pure oxygen is passed. Okay. So, if I have a dry oxide and I plot B versus T 1 upon T, I see a straight line okay, and its slope is 1.23 electron volt. If I plot B versus temperature 1 by T in fact and I actually see for a dry oxide case, the slope is 1.23 electron volt. If I repeat the same graphical this for B by A versus temperature, I plot B by A versus 1 upon T and I get slope of 2 electron volt, okay. This is experimental, okay. This is experimental because I what I did, I actually went and did oxidation, monitored the thicknesses at different temperature for different times and plotted them to get B and B by A at different temperatures. So, this is no model, this is essentially what I can measure, okay. And now, I want to prove that what I said in the model probably fits to what I monitored and therefore, Brodel model is reasonably good, okay. Is that point clear to you? Okay. Okay, so B and B by A for dry. We do weight oxidations in 95 degree water vapors. So, I did it, uh, we did same experiment for weight oxides and I find for B the slope is 0 0.78 EV and B by A has a slope of 2.05 EV. Let us look at this term again B and B by A. Okay, if you are noted down, uh, as I say B by A is also called KL and B is also called KP in many simulators 
and that can be written as C1 exponential minus E1 by kT, C2 exponential minus E2 by kT, this is the model they are used, okay. And if you see here, these are the E's, E1, E2, okay. This is the temperatures, slope we have got it. C star into Ks by N1 is, that is what we have just derived, B, B by A is C star Ks by N1, B is 2 effective by C star, Ks, C is constant, N1 is constant. So if this temperature dependence has to come, Ks must have similar relations. If this relation has to be followed in this, the D effective must be, for, I mean E2 must be following the activation energy associated with D effective, okay. Is that point clear? If these are equals from the graphs if I say, then the, since here they are constants, only D effective is temperature dependent, K is temperature dependent. So obviously this E1 must conform to Ks and E2 must conform to T effective, okay. And uh, yes, this experiment was uh, further extended and once we did this, we found that they did, they did, which essentially means what? The linear rate constant B by A essentially is governed by reaction rate constant which has temperature dependence of E to the power E1 by KT where E1 is 1.23 for dry oxidation, 0.78 for weight oxidation. So Ks actually follows what the growth is this. Diffusivity of oxidant for drier weight, you can see from here, sorry, uh, this was Ks and this one. For B, we find it is 1.23.78 and we figure out D effective has the same energy of oxidant in oxide as such we know and same is reaction rates we know about in real life. We actually monitor by different methods. So we figured out that this process is reaction rate limited and this process is diffusion limited and which is obvious initially when the oxide thickness is small, the available oxidant is enough, it is the reaction possible at a given temperature to convert silicon into silicon dioxide, Si plus 2O2, SiO, SiO bond has to be formed. Now this at a given temperature is, this is the reaction, so it has to, this reaction will be temperature dependent. That is what exactly we did experiment and we found yes it does, depends on this. However, when I increase the time, that means I have larger time, by then already oxide thickness has grown. So the available oxidant now at the interface of silicon silicon dioxide is smaller and it is this as much as you, you can diffuse through is going to available for oxidation. Any amount coming I will oxidize but available is only what you will supply, okay. So it is the diffusivity which decided how much oxidant I can provide initially everything available. So reaction is possible. In next time reaction can be done any amount but available kitna. So that means the reaction rate constant is dominant in linear initial times and parabolic rate constants are dominant in thicker oxide times. This is Carl Hu's paper way back in 71, uh, a very famous person. Now we also we figured out that the oxide thickness for 111 plane is different from 100. We are shown the last time that, oh maybe we have to show, sorry we are not shown. So why do you think that C1 constant is larger for uh, compared to this? Uh, the reason why 111 shows oxide thickness thicker can anyone suggest why it can be thicker? Because more atoms on that plane, the question asked was exactly this Miller planes. The Miller plane strain, how many atoms are available on that to react, okay. So 1, 1, 1 shows the maximum silicon atoms, 4 of them in fact are 4 corners and 3 inside. 
since they are the largest number the growth rate is highest along the plane okay. This is exactly what is data has been shown taken from Carl who uh, based on this I can again show you this same time once again and again. The slow activation in KS and activation energy related with the diffusion is found identical to what is measured for K, uh, P by A and B which verifies B by A is KS limited and B is D effective limited identical the energy associated with KS and 1 upon T and D effective 1 upon T their slope essentially matches with the actual data measured by B and B by A which means the grow deal model to a great extent okay, is valid except for the assumptions uh, which we may have to modify as things go. Okay. But for a thicker oxide less than say a thicker oxide around 100 Armstrongs or above grow deal model fits very well anything below 100 is not true. For D effective and KS for whom KS will be have different activation energy which is essentially what B by A we got. B by A is proportion to KS. So, if I monitor KS by not by B by A method by actual reaction by thermodynamics. So, if I evaluate thermodynamically this equation I get whatever activation energy associated I figured out that is same as what B by A I got by experiment. So, which means B by A is KS limited. Okay. I did same thing for diffusivity experiments from the uh, chemical point of view and whatever energies I found for both weight and this I matched it with B values and I find I got the same within errors, okay, within experimental errors. Activation energy is the energy required to react, okay. it is essentially a bind, it is an enthalpy. See the, yeah, by any any reaction, whether binding or dissociation or enthalpy formation is essentially related to energy. The if A plus B has to go to C plus D, then the reaction is favored forward if the Gibbs energy is plus, that is enthalpy minus entropy T delta S is positive. If enthalpy minus T delta is negative, dissociation B C plus D will go back to A plus B. Okay, we we'll see in CVD. This is where we adjust the growth. If I want growth, what should I do? A plus B should be stronger in delta G must be positive. So, A plus B will react. When I want to H, what should I do? I do not want reaction, I want etching. Okay. So, I will see to it C plus D goes back to A plus B. That is exactly what we do. Depositions and etching are identical, the reaction are favored or not favored. Okay. Is that point? If something is formed, I reverse it. Do not form, okay. yeah, remove it. Okay. So, that is exactly what I am trying to say. So, what essentially I am trying to say you the, that grow deal model to a great extent is a good model uh, except for as I say very thin oxides. Uh, if I see orientation as I already said uh, B by Orientation is only you know afterward it is the diffusivity. After in thick oxide, how much is available is going to decide. Only in thinner oxide, available bonds will decide available reaction. So we know B by A 110, 111 is at least 1.7 times B by A of 100 constants. I already given C1, C2, you can figure value out. And this is also essentially uh, the ratio of bonds of 111 to 100. So, initial oxide will be thicker for 111 compared to 100 by 1.7 times. Afterwards, why they will it will not this because availability of oxidant is going to decide and not the rate. So, then 111 and 100 will have same thing as diffusion limitations. But initially, available bonds to react at a given temperature will be decided by which kind of planes you have. We also have in real life polysilicon as gate and uh, we will see that later. The growth of oxide is different from poly compared to crystallines. 
we have not done poly so far, so I do not want to preempt, but just for the heck of it, I may show you something which is of. See, polycrystals, say, let us say this is crystalline, but its orientation is different at different x, y, z, okay. They are crystallites, but there are many of them, poly, large numbers. So, in this part they may be crystalline, but their orientation will be different compared to orientations here and here. Some may be larger crystallites, some will be smaller. The line between two such crystallites is called grain boundary. Each crystallite is called grain. So, these are all grain boundaries. That is two crystallites are meeting at that point that is called grain boundaries. Now grain boundaries that do not have crystals there, okay. So it is like a void in the system, okay. So if you push something, it may not go through oxide, uh, crystallite but may actually go through the grain boundaries. So more and more atoms may be possible to be oxidized because much of the oxidant now will not necessarily go through silicon or silicon dioxide layer on the top, but through grain boundaries and react, okay. So do you expect thicker oxides for poly? Because more deeper, at least thicker oxide because it will oxygen can go deeper in the polycrystallines. Polyoxide is a many crystallite and hence many grain boundaries. Oxygen diffuses faster through the grain boundaries leading to enhanced oxidation rate and the model which is suggested is A e to the t to the power n where A is a fit constant, n is also fit constant. Kya karenge? Iska oxide lenge, time se plot karenge or is function ko fit kar denge. So we say okay this is the law polyoxides follow, it does not follow deal group model, it follows another law, okay. Is that okay? And why it is so? Because we have not yet studied very strongly the diffusivity through grain boundaries. There are many microcrystalline theories some other day if you are really working PhD for that, then I will show you how even this model is not correct, okay. But as of now, we will not discuss, okay. Is it okay? So we say polycrystalline poly when oxidized it oxidizes thicker compared faster therefore compared to normal or silicon okay and the formula it fits into is x0 a t to the power n n is typically more than half okay which essentially is closer to parabolic and greater than half is half is parabola so it is slightly higher than parabola faster growth. This is like Bt, okay, so as root Bt. So essentially it is saying if you do that, it is essentially parabolic growth because thicker oxide is growing. But N is not 5, half, but it is larger than half. Is that clear? Thicker. And there is no thinner oxide because by then grain enough oxidant will be made available and it will be decided only by this available. Okay, the next effect for us under pressure the crystals are stays leading to enhanced effect. Whenever you put a uh, wafer inside pressures and there is an experiment done for a water vapor a water solution and we actually put a high pressure on that and the oxidation rate, Jairaman's experiment very popular one. Uh, this pressure effects are coming back in some other way now in pin fats as well as MOSFETs. What for the pressure we are talking? Strains, okay. Pressure is essentially stress proportion strain. So when the lattice is not matched, then it is a strain which is essentially due to the pressure, okay, of that is stress. Stress is pressure. So force per unit area is a pressure, okay. So strain is essentially now coming back once again to improve your mobilities, okay. But in oxide, this is not crystalline, it is oxide. In oxide, uh, more bonds are available because under pressure, lattice is heavily pressed and it breaks actually. It is lattice, porosity is not 100%. So, more oxidation is possible. 
So a formula was figured out in linear growth regime B by A at any pressure is B by A at atmospheric pressure times P to the power N. Typically the pressure which we used by Jayaraman earlier was 1 to 3 atmospheric pressure and N was found to be 0 0.7 to 0 0.8 again fit function. So all modeling people very happy they fit experimental data fit. Okay. Then you can say that I could have fitted something P should be some numbers, N should be some, I can fit any in a such combination. But I know roughly that how much pressure I can put actually before it actually breaks. So I figured out up to 3 atmosphere it sustains. Okay. So I fixed those value in between and for those values how much N it can fit to the data. So some physics was brought afterwards after I really see what is happening, I say okay, isko phanda bhi maar dete hai, which is not true because there are n combinations I can make out of it. Okay. But that is all modelers do including person like me. Then there is an oxidation which many a times we will have to do which is called oxidation due to uh, impurities present in the oxide, do, uh, impurity present uh, like heavily doped silicon as a different oxidation rate compared to lightly doped silicon. Okay. So there is a difference in growth rates and uh, typically the fitting function for doping greater than 10 to power 9 per c, 19 per cc, where do you think this numbers will appear? Which area of MOSFET? Source drain. Okay. So in source drain the field oxide growths uh, will be thicker naturally because of a B by A is 20 times B I undoped. 2 times B by F of P type, B type for B is doped is twice B type undoped and B doped is 0 0.04 times undoped for N and P type. This is a fit data again, this numbers do not actually matter but close to this numbers can be fitted. Okay. In real life it may become 0 0.3, 0 0.0385 but it is okay to say 0 0.054. The real data may not be exactly this number but this is good enough because most of the time we are not very keen, we not actually just do by, uh, we actually monitor. So I know how much oxide thickness I have there. Okay. So I may not make mistake in future this but to model, I cannot do very, very accurate models. If I have to then whatever, every time I get experimental data for the lab, I will retry to fit in this and actually get the fit models. Okay. For this lab, for this furnaces, this everything I know this data which may not be universal only for this people. Okay. This is how all people do. We get spice parameters in the circuit simulator, all kinds of uh, effects are taken care, all physics is introduced by fitting. Okay. What do you mean by fitting? I mean the physics cannot be fit I say, but that is what it happens. As long as IV, IDS, VDS characteristics appears, circuit performance appears, who cares whether it is caged to the power or not to the power. This function fits, that is what we want. But if I have to understand what is happening, then I am, uh, is the mobility dependency is how much is correct, okay. Is the oxide thickness is varying how much, okay. Then I will start VT is constant or not constant, how much is double there. So I will now put a physics and since it does not fit, I will put some constants, exponential constants so that it fits to the lab data okay, for a given technology. Then I have a circuit simulator with modified model card. Okay. No one stops me putting my model card, so I will put my model card. Okay. That will give me the accurate result. Okay. This is how all uh, designers do. Whatever actuality are there, they will fit to a value which fits to the data. And then of course many of us will like to physics, so force physics on it. Okay. But that is more interesting to see. Before we quit last this, uh, all these models since it starts with thin oxide assumption, if you are going thin oxide then what is the model? Okay. Uh, since we are scaling down the technologies at least below 90 and even 65, the gate oxide thickness is now reducing below 40 Armstrongs okay. and in the 
28 nanometer or 22 nanometer, it is less than 5 Armstrongs, it is even close to 1 Armstrong now. 1 Armstrong of course you cannot grow and that was the question asked in your quiz. If you scale down technologies, the oxide thickness are becoming less than 5 Armstrongs and then there is one monolayer which you cannot grow and therefore you need high K so that capacitance remains constant epsilon A by T. So increase 1 epsilon, increase T the ratio remains same okay. So use high K okay. Here we are not talking of high K, we are just saying it is reducing. Uh, till very late we were working on thin 65 even there is SiO2 thickness uh, gate on insulators have been used uh, uh, below 14.4 nanometers. I started using nano because these days everyone must talk nano not Armstrong so I also wrote 4 nanometers okay. The kinetics of thin oxide growth was not exactly as predicted by Deal and Grow okay. So for example, thicker it may still work because then it is not a thin oxide. So we are not interested to know something about parabolic because by then it is already thick. Okay. Where is the worry? The linear portion because there the thickness is smaller. Okay. So we figured out that if I see the Grodel model and if I see the actual thickness, it is somewhere different slope which essentially means thinner oxides do not follow exactly in the very thin oxide regime the deal grow model. To reduce the oxide thickness what should I reduce? One is of course time but time cannot be one second okay. I mean you can push and take out you can do. So, you will put some minutes. So, what can I reduce? Temperature. So I actually reduce the temperature, so I do not go oxide at 900, 1200 but I do it at 800 possible. You can say why not 600, there is no reaction, the reaction minimum temperature for SiO bond to form is at 800. So the thinnest of, uh, oxide can be grown around 800 degree centigrade which is around 1073 degrees Kelvin okay. Please convert everywhere into Kelvins okay. So the, there are models which are available in market <laughs> okay. quickly will show you and so I, is that clear to you for a thinner oxide regime this is what we see this is what Brodil predicts. One of my PhD student way back in 80s did this work which model I will show you later. There is a first model which appeared was Richmond's model which has uh, uh, some modification they did x0 is a t plus tn to the power this, tn is a fit parameter okay uh, which is essentially xi by a, a and b are constants okay uh, is a fit parameter xi is also fit parameter get the data and fit it into this uh, model and we say okay Rishman says if you grow this and fit into this it will fit okay. So fit get A, B and Xi from the actual data and use this model for your lab okay for your CAD tool okay. You can see everywhere what we are doing is fit okay. So someone should say well, is it B by A or is it what no I do not know. What is it? It is A and B. Then there was a Han and Helms model which uh, uh, the, he said there are two parallel reactions are going on in this. So he says B1 upon 2x0 by A1 and B2 upon 2x0 by A2. Now this you have this B1, B2, A1, A2 as fit parameters and try to adjust x0 versus time using these two parallel terms. So if this does not fit the data you add from here some term and see it may be minus as well sin B2 may be minus depends on the fit you want and you see that it fits to a available data okay. This is called Han and Helms, mo Helms model. The most uh, important model which except which was accepted for quite some time was from Plummer and his student Masood. And uh, Masood has the best of data as well 
uh, in way back in 90s, Masood published much of the uh, experimental data for thin oxides as well as to thick oxides. But and his data has been taken as the most standard data by almost all industries. This was work done by Stanford. Okay. ये दो टर्म में ये आपने लिख पहले लिखा था मैं एक और टर्म जाड़ कर ऐड कर दी मैंने देन मसूद एंड प्लमर हैज ए मॉडल दे से ओके द सेकंड टर्म इंस्टेड ऑफ बी2 बाय समथिंग दे हैड एडेड अ टर्म कॉल्ड ई टू द पावर एक्सपोनेंशियल x0 बाय l अगेन टू एंड दे एक्सपेक्टेड दैट द l वैल्यू व्हिच दे विल यूज शुड बी लेस देन 70 एम स्ट्रांग बियॉन्ड व्हिच दिस इज नॉट वैलिड थिकर ऑक्साइड्स so they added another parameter here c and l to fit the data and that is that was accepted for many years uh, or rather even now if the first attempt is to use uh, masood's data and masood uh, plumber's model uh, we also did some uh, more kinetics on that for thin oxide uh, our work was published in jap 1989 uh, myself wasi and morir my phd student so we suggested some equations uh, that s is called the available site there is a term which we created called site so we say oxidant plus site may form a oxygen site combination oxygen o2s plus another site may form 2s at with a constant i mean proportion to constant k2 reaction rate constant then we say si plus si si bond will react with os to form SiO SI bond and create another site and that's how oxide will keep growing thin oxide will come we also introduce many constant in this expression p is some constant omega into silicon silicon bond times n k3 into k1 k2 these are called constants of uh, reactions q is k1 and r is k1 k2 this of course those who are very keen can see our paper of 89 okay uh, we fitted this data for 800 degree and 900 degree centigrade uh, with the masood experimented data which he published for different pressures but uh, 0.1 atmospheric pressure is the best result they claimed so we fitted our model to this and uh, by making a proper choices of k1 k2 also we derived what values we should have and based on our analysis of this uh, we could get pqr values which fits into thin oxide so we could fit data up to 20 and strongs of oxide thickness okay below 20 of course our model also did not fit 20 to 40 and strongs or 60 and strongs our model fitted very well with the experimental data then known So if tomorrow someone wants another model, uh, you can always try something. So you should be able to find some reactions. What should be the real materials going on? What bonds can it create? What is the binding energy is available? What is the space charge around? So there are many things which you can think and add on to a model. Okay, is that okay? So this finishes the modeling part. next time we'll do oxidation techniques and characterization